what's the scariest thing going on in our world right now that not enough people know talk about? The collapse of the insect population. Over the past 5 to 10 years, the insect population in our neighborhood has tanked. No more fireflies, no more bees, no more butterflies. And this year was the first year toads didn't come to our swimming pool and have their orgy. It's terrifying how quickly these changes have taken place. I have noticed less insects over the past 3 decades. Less Christmas beetles, butterflies, bees, cicadas, pumpkin beetles, the list goes on. It is noticeable, but not too many folks seem to care. Frogs have taken a massive hit too. It breaks my heart. I've noticed that there are far fewer birds where I lived to 20 years ago they were everywhere. Now I only see a few every day. I've been really thinking about the birds as well. I remember being in high school, a long time ago, and always being annoyed at how loud all the birds were in the mornings on the weekends. Now, I rarely hear birds anymore. Not the scariest, but a lot of the people who helped clean up the BP oil spill from Horizon are suffering long-term medical issues. Their case has been essentially swept under the rug. Antibiotic resistance and the overprescribing of them. I don't think this gets talked about nearly enough, and it's already a problem. I remember reading an article recently that said in the future antibiotic resistant bacteria related deaths will surpass cancer deaths. Medical student here. I learned in class that by 2050 infectious diseases will surpass cancer as the second leading cause of death in the US. Also, 70% of all antibiotic use in the US is in raising cattle. The problem is that pharmaceutical companies would rather produce a heart medication that you need to buy for the rest of your life than an antibiotic that you'd take for a relatively short period of time. Edit, a drug you have to buy for the rest of your life means a lot more profit than an antibiotic that the average person buys from pharmacies maybe once or twice per illness. When Texas flooded during Hurricane Harvey, there were 13 Superfund sites that got hit. A Superfund site is an area where there are hazardous substances or pollutants on a huge scale. A bunch of chemicals got swept away into those floodwaters and no one will know the effect for years. Don't forget that they just had a plant explosion in which tons of chemicals leaked into the water system. They said only 3 frogs and 4 fish were affected by it. Recently there have been sharks, fish and other marine life washing up dead on shore in Galveston. Everyone I know from the coast talks about how dead the gulf is now. There is straight up, actual human slavery that is going on in parts of the world. We've just kind of been collectively uninformed slash ignoring it. Edit, in most parts of the world. I'm actually learning a ton from reading the comments, never realized how prominent trafficking was in US and Canada. Right under our noses. It goes on in developed countries too probably in all major cities. People are trafficked through Victoria Coach Station in London so much the police have operations with spotters. Yes to this. Having survived trafficking in Vancouver it's crazy how many people don't realize that it's going on right here in good old North America. The sterilization crisis in the medical device industry and how it impacts our access to safe medical products and on top of that how major companies have been off gassing toxic ethylene oxide gas that has been causing cancer in people who live next to factories for years and no one gave a shit. The sterilization crisis in the medical device industry. This is the first I've heard of it. Can you tell me more? My brother works in the hospital and he says that due to sterilization, bacteria are much more resistant and that we are at risk of not being able to properly sterilize anymore. Not sure if that is what Op is talking about. I'm not sure if it's the scariest for the short term, but the death of reality. By that I mean how almost every person giving us information, news, blogs, ECT, is fabricating or obscuring the truth for better profits. They understand anger keeps people interested in coming back and go to disturbing lengths to push for those narratives. Trying to follow a news story most of the time is jumping from hyperlink to hyperlink between different news sites with no originating source to be found. I've seen a TED talk where the speaker openly mocked any sort of critical discourse of his topic that went unnoticed or uncaring. I thought Vice was pretty good, 
but they also started being openly biased and made me question their authenticity. Unbiased journalism is dying, as far as I can see, and it's rarely discussed. Journalism Today, read an Apriuta's article on for instance Saddam's weapons of mass destruction, then write one article explaining how they are there, and one explaining how they aren't, while choosing different quotes from the same story to support each position. That sounds like a high school English class assignment. The amount of microplastics, medicine and unkillable pathogens in waste water treatment. Due to the relatively low medicine concentrations, bacteria and viruses are building up resilience against the common antibacteria and antiviral medicine, which will eventually form a super pathogen that requires a totally new production method. Microplastics are very destructive to aquatic life and will do a lot of damage to the marine life. Water in general will be the new oil due to climate change, so that won't be fun either. In the frozen ice of Antarctica there are really old bacteria. Older than humans, if the ice melts then those bacteria would release, and since nobody is resistant against them, who knows what's gonna happen. Erosion of personal privacy. Right. With the internet, smartphones and social medias, there are so many problems because of this. The companies just spy on us blatantly, everyone knows about this but nothing is done. And because of smartphones and constant online presence your job can also invade your personal privacy. My manager sometimes messages me at like 10pm, or even later, for something work related. Sure, I'm not obligated to reply but still, I hate seeing that when I'm supposed to be chilling at home far from work. At my last job they did this constantly, to the point of waking me at 7am on my one day off in a week, to ask me some bullshit. So I got to the point, where I told them, on my days off, I'm available for one hour, to discuss any work issues, from 10 to 11, but no other time bar that. If they called, I wouldn't answer. If they texted, I wouldn't reply. I had to be that strict, because it was becoming beyond a joke. Plastic. It's everywhere. In our waste. In our food. In our bodies. In our drinking water. Obviously we know it's in the sea point sure, grocery stores are slowly rolling out not using plastic bags, which is awesome. But it's scary how it's taken over everything in our lives. Even in money. We can't stop using it, yet it's building up waste everywhere, and it's causing issues in our bodies with all the macro bits we have consumed. Scientists have had a hard time finding control groups to study, because literally every person and animal they've tested has microplastics inside them. That PR, advertising and marketing have infected our minds so much virtually all of people's lives are now about perception manipulation. Changing the way you think about things and how other people think about things. Presenting yourself and your life correctly, saying the right words, parroting the right ideas. We are so self-obsessed we think our perception is reality, we are forgetting that what we think and say is nowhere near as important as what we do. Kessler syndrome. The sky above us, space, is getting flooded with orbital debris. Some of the pieces aren't even detectable. So those pieces hit satellites, which turns into more debris which hits more satellites. It could just end with no more GPS, signal, research and more. Planes would also be disrupted along with boats due to their communication system. It would take years to recover from this. A quiet epidemic. Lyme disease is the fastest growing vector-borne illness in the US. It is an infectious disease caused by the bacteria Borrelia burgdorferi transmitted to humans by the bite of an infected black leg tick. It is six times more common than HIV slash AIDS and twice as common as breast cancer. The CDC estimates 300,000 minus 1 million people will be infected this year. I urge anyone reading this to educate themselves so that they can protect themselves and their loved ones. Education and awareness saves lives. The relentless march of automation and how the workplace and humanity will have to go through a drastic change in order to accommodate it. Politicians are saying nothing about it, but companies are slowly replacing more and more jobs with robots and we will reach a critical tipping point sooner rather than later. 
it's a very sad reflection on us as a species that we are fast approaching the point where nobody needs to work, and instead of rejoicing our victory we are terrified of it. North Korea's seed bearing program. They send out attractive female spies to seduce powerful non-Asian, usually white men, journalists, business leaders, and political officials. They have the women bear their children, then return to Pyongyang to have the children there. From there, they extort the fathers for financial gain, favorable political actions, and favorable coverage in news. The children are raised and fully educated in North Korean ideology and are trained as spies. The result is well-educated versatile spies that look Western instead of North Korean, who are to be sent out to their father's countries of origin to infiltrate agencies and gather intelligence for North Korea.